it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Quick Gift Cowl. This is a really fast and super duper easy project and is also part of our 12 weeks of gifting series that we're having on Fiberflux right now. That is a quick and easy gift that you can stitch up in the weeks leading up to the holiday season. There's going to be one quick gift per week for 12 weeks. So this is the very first one of our series. It is a V-stitch in the round cowl. Now I have a couple other V-stitch cowls and I, if you hop on over to the blog, I'll share the links to those. This one is made with a large hook and some chunky yarn and we've used the V-stitch uh, in a creative way with color. So it almost kind of looks like rickrack, um, that ribbon that you see in the sewing aisle. So we're gonna go through the whole project, learning how to uh, begin a project in the round, work the V-stitch from the bottom up, and we're going to learn how to change colors and do some finish work as well. The finished cowl has a circumference of about 30 inches and has a height of about 10 inches. Now you can change those up a little bit depending on the number of chains at the beginning of your cowl and the number of rounds that you work to create the height of your cowl but it is a quick and easy piece and you'll have some yarn leftovers after this if you want to whip up another one as well. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful so you can measure the height as you go along. With all the gifts in this series that we're going to be making in our 12 weeks of gifting crochet along, we're going to be using the eight millimeter L crochet hook. And for the yarn for all the projects in this series, we're going to be using Red Hearts Super Saver Chunky. Now if you need to substitute yarn, just look on the yarn label for a yarn that is a five, and let me zoom in a little bit better so you can see that label. You're gonna look for a five bulky on the yarn weight scale, and you're gonna look for a yarn that has the recommendation of the eight millimeter L crochet hook for that, and you'll be just fine. Now each one of these is 173 yards and we're not going to use every last bit of this yarn but that's okay because the last project of our series is going to focus on scrap yarn. It's going to be kind of a scrappy uh, leftovers type of project. So if you have leftovers from any of these projects, totally fine. Just hang on to them for the last project of our series. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to jump right in. Now this is going to be um, a little splash of this uh, flamingo color, but we're going to start with the light gray. So let me pull, now if you look at your skein, if you're using the same yarn as me, there's a little diagram on the back of the yarn label near the barcode here. Now figure one, if you pull it from this side, it'll pull from the outside of the skein. In figure two, if you pull from this side, it'll pull from the center, which is really handy to have those center pull skeins, okay? So let me just pull a little bit of yarn out of here. Now, we're gonna start by uh, doing our starting chain. We're gonna do a starting chain of 75. Now, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. If you need to change the circumference of your cowl, meaning if you need to make it narrower, wider, it's just any multiple of three. So we're gonna be doing 75 chains to start. So to begin, wrap the, finger, uh, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten, okay? Next, we're going to chain 75, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 71, 72, 73, 74, and 75. Now we're going to join to create a uh, cow, the cowl shape. So we need to join in the chain farthest from the hook to create that circle that we're gonna be working from the bottom up. So what you wanna do, and I like to run my hand down the chain like this, just to make sure we're not twisting. We don't wanna twist our chain because it could, uh, be a little bit difficult to work the chains if they're going all different ways okay so we want all those chains to be facing the right way now we're at the end here so what we're going to do is insert our hook into the farthest chain from the hook and we're going to join with a slip stitch so insert your hook wrap yarn around the hook bring it through now you'll have two loops on your hook bring that loop through the loop already on your hook and now we're ready to begin round one you can see our our ring here our big circle 
Now, if you notice, I didn't make my chains too light. I kind of worked my chains sort of with a loose hand because we need to go back into those chains and work. If you're having trouble with that, and I, get a, I do get a lot of questions about this, if your chains are too tight and you can't work into them, try going up one hook size just for the starting chain. So you could go up to a nine millimeter for your chain only, and then go back down to the eight millimeter for the rest of your project, and that should help quite a bit. Okay, so for round one, we're gonna chain four. One, two, three, and four. This tail here, here we will just kind of worry about later. We're not gonna sort of um, worry about weaving it in at this time because we're gonna just focus on the stitches, okay? So what you wanna do is this chain four that we just did counts as a double crochet chain one. And then in this very first chain that you see, we're going to work a double crochet, okay? So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that first chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? And then we're gonna get some more yarn here. All right, so that's gonna create this first kind of V on our round. The next thing we're going to do is skip two chains. So one, two, and in the chain after that, we're going to work our next V. So work a double crochet, then a chain one, and then a double crochet, all in that same chain. Okay, just like that. You can see now we have two little V's on our row, or round rather. So the next thing we're gonna do is skip two chains, one, two, work a V into that next chain. Chain one, and then a second double crochet all in that same chain. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. Skip two chains, work a V into the chain after that, two double, cro or double crochet rather, chain one, double crochet. Okay, just like that. We're gonna do this all the way around. So let's do a few more together and then we'll continue around. So skip two chains, one, two, and then work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the next chain. And I have to say, if you follow the Fiberflex channel or blog, and or blog rather, you'll notice that I love V-stitch skip two chains and I use it quite a bit. And that is because, well, a few things. It's super easy, it's very fast to stitch up, and it's beautiful. It looks like lace, but it's like very deceptively easy. I mean, it's really easy to, to do, as you can see. Even in the round, it's easy. Okay, so skip two chains, and for gift giving, it's a beautiful stitch, but it's very, very fast. And as we are, um, you know, into the gift season, that is the name of the game. Skip two chains, work a V after that into the next chain. So working quick gifts with quick, beautiful stitches is definitely the goal here, okay? So as you can see, we have quite a bit of uh, Vs happening already. So skip two chains, work a V into the next chain. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. So why don't I continue around and we'll rejoin in just a moment. I'll show you how to transition into the next uh, round already. All right, so once you get back to the beginning, remember there's uh, four chains we did at the beginning of the round? Remember how I said that the first three is a double crochet and then the one it acts like the chain one to create that first V? So what you're gonna do is count three chains up. One, two, three, and we're gonna join with a slip stitch to close the round. So insert the hook into that third chain up bring up a loop, now bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and then round one is complete. It's very, very quick. Let's move on to round two. Now after we do round two, I'm gonna show you how to incorporate this flamingo color. We're gonna put some sort of random stripes throughout our cowl, just to give it like a little bit of color throughout, okay? I love the neutral, but I love when neutrals have a bright paired up with them. I just think it's so pretty and modern looking. So round two is very, very easy. I think it's even easier than round one because we're not counting anything anymore. So we're just going to chain four. Uh, once again, one, two, three, four. That again counts as a double crochet chain one. And then 
This first V, see this first V that we're sort of over top of right now? Work a double crochet into that first V, okay? And then what that will look like, it'll look a little different than the rest of the Vs, but as we work more rounds, it'll, it'll kind of change a little bit. Um, but that chain at the beginning counts as half of the first V, if you will. Hop over to the next V, and you're going to work a V right into that V. So in that chain one space from the previous round, remember the center of the V, we did a chain one. In that chain one space, work a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Just like that. And as you can see, now our Vs will be stacked on top of one another. Okay? Hop over to the next V. And we're going to work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And this is why I love this stitch. It's so lightning fast. You just zip through. Whenever you're working into those spaces, those are really quick projects. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the next V. And by now, you should see a pattern here. We're working a V into each V from the previous round, okay? So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, okay? I'm going to continue around working my V's and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Now for the rest of your cow, you'll just repeat round two, but before we depart, I want to show you how to infuse a little bit of color into your cow as well. Okay, just working that last V of our round. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then we're going to join. So count three chains up, one, two, three, insert the hook, bring up the loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and round two is complete. So like I mentioned before, we're going to be repeating round two over and over and over again until the piece is as tall as you would like it to be. Now I would uh, probably try it on just to see if you're getting the drape and the amount of slouch that you want. If you make it too short, it's just going to look like this big sort of loopy band around your neck. If you make it too tall, it could be a little smushy and tight looking, okay? So just try to work some rows, see if you're getting what you want, and then try it on. And because we're making this in the round, there's no seaming. You can just pop it on and off as you please. I did want to show you how to switch colors before we go, because what I'm going to do is I'm making my flamingo, this pinky color, the third round is going to be in the flamingo, and then I'm going to make the middle part in gray again. I just want to just a little splash of color in this one, but then I'm also going to do another round in the third from the end, so it'll be um, uniform, kind of like a mirror image of itself from top to bottom. What you'll want to do is grab your scissors. Now as a side note, there are lots of ways you can switch colors or join on a new, new yarn ball. I simply like to cut the yarn and tie the new yarn right on. That's just a personal preference. It's easy. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. If you have a way that you like to join yarn uh, versus just cutting it off, please feel free to do that. It's your project and your rules, right? So go ahead and cut the yarn, and what we're going to do is wrap the yarn around the hook and pull that tail through. We'll deal with these tails later on in the tutorial, so just kind of get him out of the way. And then what we're going to do is get the new yarn color, so we're going to take a break on the gray for a moment. Grab this flamingo, which I just love it. It's such, it's like a really happy kind of coral color, which is really lovely for the winter months when you need just a little bit of color. Okay, so where we fastened off, you can tell by this little knot here that we did. Uh, we're going to insert our hook into that stitch. See how the, the base of that knot is a little loop? So insert it into that stitch. That's where we left off, okay? Hook the new yarn onto your hook and pull it through. And then you're just going to tie it right on there. Nice, sturdy, secure knot. And then what we're going to do is reinsert the hook back into that stitch, bring up a loop, and now we're ready to just repeat round two, which is what we're going to be repeating for the rest of our project. We're just doing it in a different color. So I'll get you started on this round. Chain four, one, 
two, three, four. Remember that was the double crochet plus the chain one. And then work a double crochet into that first V of the round. You can see how beautifully these colors look together. Work a V into that next V. Remember double crochet, chain one, double crochet, next V, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. And then you'll just do that all the way around. So for the rest of your cowl, just keep repeating round two over and over and over again, switching colors as much as you like. You could make it a rainbow cowl, you could make it more than two colors here. You could just keep it one solid color, keep things neutral. Or you could do it in one bright color. It's totally up to you. And if you're making a couple of these as gifts, which cows make wonderful gifts, they're easy, fast, they fit pretty much everyone. Um, you could whip up a bunch of these uh, just by popping a movie in or de uh, dedicating an afternoon to them and do them in lots and lots of different colors, okay? So I'm gonna keep repeating round two over and over and over. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna do my flamingo the third round and then the third from the end. So I'll, I'll switch back to gray, work gray for a while. And then once we're getting towards the end, I'm gonna go do a little splash of the flamingo and then finish it off in the last two rounds of gray, okay? You'll see what I mean if you need a visual in just a moment. So just keep repeating round two and we will rejoin in just a moment and just finish things up. Just working that last V of the round double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we're gonna join with a slip stitch in that third chain up, one, two, three, to finish off the round. Just like that, like we've been doing. Okay, so let me show you my handiwork here. Actually, let's fasten this off so I can get this hook out of your way too. Go ahead and cut the yarn, leaving a decent enough uh, you know, tail to weave in later. Wrap the yarn around the hook and pull it through. And then let's straighten out our work here. Now this pale gray and this bright flamingo look so pretty together. Now this is a seriously easy cowl. I made this very quickly in less than the length of like a movie, maybe even like a hour long show. It's a really easy project. And we can zoom out a little bit more. The colors look beautifully, but I wanted to show you just, uh, I kind of explained this before, but I wanted to show you visually when it was finished. I did two rounds of the gray, one round of flamingo, and then I did one, two, three, four, five, six more gray, one flamingo, two more gray. Okay, so it's sort of like if you were to fold it in half, it's symmetrical, okay? Now you could have done half gray, half flamingo for a color block effect, but I really love when you isolate V-stitch like this, a uh, one color, it makes these fun zigzag. It almost looks like that rickrack ribbon that you can find in the sewing section. So anyway, our cowl is officially done. We just have to do some finish work. So I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle, and what we we'll wanna do, what we want to do rather, is turn the cowl inside out. And then you can see we have our ends. Now. I like to weave, when I'm doing certain stitches, like this one that's much more open, I like to weave my ends in myself. You could opt to weave your ends in as you go along by sort of holding the tail along the top of your work. But I really, for these more open stitches, I like to weave the ends in myself. It gives me a little bit more control, okay? So what we wanna do is stay in the flamingo area. I have a, a flamingo tail that I'm gonna weave in. And we're gonna just go through the backs of these stitches. Now V-stitch definitely has a front and a back. It does look pretty on the back, but there's definitely a front and a back. We're gonna go down through here, just in one direction, and then we're gonna flip it back over and then just come back in the other direction and grab your scissors and give everything a little snip. And then you just wanna repeat that and then you know you want to straighten it out too but you want to just repeat that for all the other tails of your project too so I'm gonna go ahead and weave these in and then we'll see the finished cowl all of our ends have been woven in and we just need to flip our cowl right side out and it looks beautiful and it's ready to go this was a seriously fast project and I just wanted to show you 
that I have some of the gray left and I have a ton of the flamingo left because I only did two stripes. So you could even get a second one out of this using the reverse, like do it all in flamingo with some gray striping. Or you could do a little bit of a thicker gray or what have you. So you definitely have enough yarn to crank out a few more of these for gift giving. So this is uh, once again part of the uh, 12 weeks of gifting event that we're having on Fiberflux. It's one quick gift per week so you can stitch up a bunch of gifts each week leading up to the holiday season, whatever holiday you celebrate. And we have uh, 11 more of these projects. So stay tuned. Um, they're going to be coming once per week. And they all use this same yarn, same size hook. And I promise that they're all nice, quick, and easy gifts. When you make your pieces, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal, and I'll put that above, to share your work so we can all see what everyone's doing. Also, I have two groups now. We have our Ravelry group that's been around for a while, where you can hop on in and share your work, ask questions, help others. And we have a brand new Facebook group that I'm really excited about that we're going to kind of be doing the same thing. So if you're on one and not the other or what have you, if you want to join both, um, it's a great uh, place where folks in the Fiberflux community hang out. Um, everyone who's doing the cows. We always have cows going on. Sometimes we have multiple cows going on. So hop on over there and see what everybody's doing as well. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.